let's now have a look at our logarithmic function and see how we deal with that when it comes to differentiating. And uh, basically, if you've got the log of a function, it's derivative of a function. You may recall in the exponentials, I did the example of just log x, and the answer was 1 on x. So again, derivative on function. So to generalize it, there it is. If the base is not a natural log, then in this case, we divide by the natural log of a. So be careful with that, because you remember with the exponential, we multiplied by the natural log of a. But with the logarithm, we divide by the natural log of a. That's because the logarithm is the inverse of the exponential. So and the inverse of multiplication is division. It all basically comes from the, the change of base formula, is where it comes from. All right, so let's have a look at some examples. So log of 3x plus 5 is just derivative on function. 3 on 3x plus 5. Log of x cubed. Now we could actually do this two ways. I can say derivative on function, 3x squared on x cubed, simplifies down to be 3 on x. Or I could use my log laws and bring the power to the front and rewrite that as 3 log x and then differentiate the log x, derivative on function, which is 1 on x, and 3 times that, again, we get the answer 3 on x. So it really just depends on which way you prefer to go. Uh, for something simple as that, it probably doesn't matter which way you go. Ooh, the log of log x. So derivative on function, the function is log x. So the derivative of log x is derivative on function, 1 on x. So we get derivative 1 on x over the function log x. And we can just tidy that one up, move that x to the denominator, and we get 1 on x log x. Always derivative on the function. And the function is what you're logging. Ooh, x plus 3, x plus 2. Derivative on function. Well, the function is x plus 3, x plus 2. To differentiate that, I need to use a product rule. Write down the first diff the second, plus write down the second diff the first. Tidy that up. Or I could use my log laws. Log of x plus 3 plus the log of x plus 2. Differentiate log of x plus 3. I get 1 on x plus 3. Differentiate log of x plus 2. I get 1 on x plus 2. Now, depending on what you're doing with the derivative, if you're just simply substituting a number in, well, there's probably no need to rewrite that all as one fraction. You can just sub it straight into that derivative. Of course, if you're finding stationary points, you're still going to have to bring those two fractions together, uh, and you do get the same answer. So possibly, I think, with this one, uh, something like that, using your log laws first quite possibly is a, a quicker way of doing the calculus on that one. Quotient rule. Derivative on function. Okay. Now, the function is x plus 5 and x plus 2. That goes to the bottom of the fraction. The derivative, I have to use the quotient rule. So on the top, we square the bottom, right down the bottom, diff the top, minus right down the top, diff the bottom. Tidy that up. Well, invert and multiply is probably going to be easier. So I'm now multiplying by x plus 2 x plus over x plus 5. Um, the top of the the top of the top turns out to be negative 3. Um, the x plus 2s will cancel. And there we go. We get our final answer. This one probably is definitely easier to use your log laws. Log of x plus 5 minus log of x plus 2. Differentiate both. And if I want to bring them together, it's just an algebraic fraction question. But I, I think there's more scope for making a silly error in the first way there than the, the second way. Again, it's just a matter of preference which way you want to go. All right, here's something where the base is not e. So the base is 10. So derivative on function, 6 on 6x. But now we also divide by the natural log of the base. Uh, so log 10. The 6s will cancel and we get 1 on x log 10. Alrighty, so we now have that really big hand again, uh, doing differentiation.